Hi, my name is Kel McQueen. About a year ago, I woke up one morning and I realized that, like myself, I didn't know any women that had a father in their lives. I interviewed three different women from three different walks of life that have three different experiences. And I wanted to share it with you. This is my father, John Doe. A little bit about my father. Um, from what I know of him, uh, he was sweet but aggressive, so kind of passive aggressive. Um, he he was a heroin addict, so he was raised in the streets. So he really knew it was the streets. It was a, when he was around a relationship. Uh, from being a heroin addict and being a stick-up kid, you know, he was in and out of jail, including being in the street. So he would have his time. He'll come uh, when he can and spend time with me. Um, I didn't find out till my teenage years that my mother was actually giving him money to see me. So you know. You know, at least come see your daughter. I'll give you some money, but come see your daughter. And that made me feel like, wow. You know, it's that bad to where that that hit or, you know, that need of wanting to be in the streets is more important than your baby. So it's like, it was more than a competition. It was a competition I was losing. But when he was there, it was like nothing else really mattered. I guess that's all I really know about him. Women who grow up without father figures in their lives have a tendency to have self-esteem issues and start to kind of feel an emptiness and have feelings of being worthless. The absence of my father was very present. Um, both of my, my, my biological father and my stepfather both passed away um, between the ages of 11 and 12. So throughout my teenage years, I didn't have any uh, male role models that were present and I basically became a victim and I didn't understand um, how to interact with with boys so basically I was able you know willing to accept any type of attention that came my way because I didn't know what was good attention what was bad attention and it caused me to you know become a victim of some domestic violence and you know it just was not a positive experience for me um, I really did need someone there to tell me, hey, when boys give you this type of attention, that's not necessarily the best thing for you. It gave me a sense of loss, and I carried that throughout my dating years. It always felt like the men that I would be with were not going to be around for a long time, so I did anything possible to make sure that I never had to feel that same loss again. When a girl's growing up, and she has not properly been introduced to who a man is and what it means to be loved by a man or treated well by a man. She has bad experiences. So unfortunately, when she has those bad experiences and she may have bad experience after bad experience after bad experience, and that may cause her to have what's called a bitterness. She hasn't been properly introduced to what, what a man even means. One of the ways that I myself have used to kind of overcome some of the pain and the feelings that I have 
when it comes to the fact that I didn't grow up in a household with my father is um, I had to be honest with myself. I had to be honest with myself about my pain, my need to have somebody, my need to be accepted. I had to be honest with myself about these things. And that actually started my healing process. I had to admit that I was hurt and I was broken. Looking back in my past, most of my problems came because I wanted a quick fix solution for a problem that took a lot of years to come to fruition. You know, um, there were a lot of opportunities that I didn't have my father. There were a lot of events that he wasn't there. There were all these things that he was never present for. But once I got older, I wanted to quickly fix those issues. And that wasn't something that could be done. I needed to take time to really learn about myself. I needed to grow and mature. And if I had known that then, a lot of the mistakes along the way could have easily been avoided. My early, earliest uh, memory of him was a time that uh, he taught me how to swim. He taught you how to swim? He taught me how to swim. Uh, we went to the pool and he was like, Mousy, get in there, you're gonna float and just kick your feet. And I followed, I did exactly what he did. I told me and I, I've been swimming ever since, frontwards, backwards, <laughs> some of everything. But um, that's one, did, one thing he did teach me. He taught me how to swim. But did that make you feel special? when he did that particular thing Yeah, you. I felt like I mattered something to him, that he actually took the time out and taught me something as simple as that. When he wasn't around, I felt inadequate. I felt like Well, um, the time he disappointed me, uh, I was eight years old, and it was a week before Christmas, and um, he came to me and he made me promise him some things. You know, he made me promise him not to cut my hair, never to smoke cigarettes, and he promised me that he was gonna be there the next week to spend Christmas with me and he promised me and Christmas came and gone and he didn't show and two days after Christmas I find out he committed suicide on Christmas Eve My stepfather passed away first. He actually had a heart attack on our couch in the living room and I actually was the person who watched it. I had to call the police um, and the ambulance. So that really affected me because that was trauma that I didn't you know, get counseling for or anything like that. And then about six or seven months later when my biological father passed away, I didn't want to go to a funeral. I didn't want to have anything to do with death any longer, um, which I regret because I wish I had at least gone to my father's funeral uh, just to pay my respect and at least feel that connection there. Um, so I wasn't able to see that and it just made me a really angry teenager. I felt abandoned and alone and I felt as though, you know, no one is there to really protect me, so I'm gonna learn to protect myself. So. I really just became extremely aggressive, um, 
you know, I just felt like I'm not going to be a victim anymore. Nobody's going to hurt me. And I believe that whatever you put out is what you attract. Well, I believe that I was in an abusive relationship because I attracted what I put out. I was very angry um, and violent, and I believe I attracted that type of person. My uh, son's father began to become very aggressive and abuse me uh, from the age of 18 to about 22. And it was a really difficult situation to get out of because I didn't feel as if I had anyone that I could go to who would defend me. So, you know, my brothers didn't have a, uh, they had a father, but not necessarily the best role model. So they didn't understand the need for them to step in. So I was pretty much alone. And in that situation, I basically um, was just repeating the cycle of violence that had been um, perpetuated throughout my family. And it was just not a, a very, positive situation and I knew I needed to get out of it uh, for my son's sake so after I had my son I decided you know this is not the way I want my son to see positive women I wanted him to understand that this is not the way to treat women but also I wanted him to understand that as a mother your job is to protect your child and protect them from these negative situations so that kind of gave me the strength to move out of that situation. When I was growing up, I didn't have a father in my household or really in my life very much. He was very sporadic when it came to calling or us going to see him. You know, it was it wasn't a very it wasn't a constant thing hardly at all. I don't know very much about my father. But the thing about it is, even though my father has not been in my life and I haven't had experiences with him, I still love him very much. I love him very much. And I don't hold a hatred for him. Don't know why. I just don't. The guys I dated before I met my husband, they all were the same. Tall, light skin, a lot of tattoos. Um, they were all drug dealers. I think it tied to my father's experience because it was like I wanted that love from the people that was giving him his love. My father is John Anderson, and um, he's a very well-respected man. Um, he's a family-oriented man. He loves his family. Just the conversations that we have. Um, I could talk to him really for hours, just about everything. And um, I couldn't see growing up without him. I just couldn't. Something that stands out to me is the fact that his presence was so felt, it wasn't even just in our family. It was even the kids in the neighborhood. They loved to be around us and our family because our dad was there. He would be out there playing with all of us in the neighborhood. And they, to this day, 
I'll get friends that'll comment on pictures and stuff like that on Facebook and say how much they love my dad. Like because of those memories. He gave our friends memories, not just us. I felt different for sure. It was like we were kind of, um, we were definitely the minority. Um, so it was, we felt different. We always felt different. And I noticed that sometimes the kids who didn't have both parents would automatically assume that we had more money um, and that we, we were just better off. Having my mom and my dad in my household, um, something that I learned that I carry with me as an adult is I didn't realize this until I got older, but I never seen them argue in front of us, ever. And um, of course they have problems just like any other relationship, but they never argued in front of us. I can't name one time where I remember them arguing. And now that's something that I'm definitely gonna make sure I do when I have kids. If I have problems, they don't need to know about it. Don't argue in front of them. It's not something that they need to see. If I could say anything to my dad, I would say that you are an amazing man and you have molded me into the woman that I am today and you, you're just a good dude. <laughs> you're a good guy. The reason why I decided to do this documentary was not to bash men or bash the male figure. It was to express and stress the importance of a little girl having a father in her life. It's always made very well known why boys need men in their lives because they need to teach them how to be men. But it's not explained very often why a little girl needs a father in her life and how important it is. I'm so happy that I'm in a place where I'm no longer angry. I'm happy where I'm in a place where I've been able to let go of the negativity that has surrounded me and could have taken over my life. And I've been able to take those negative experiences and make positive ones out of them. How do I move on in life? Um, I, I just give it to God. Hold on. It's gonna get better. The things that you're feeling, the emptiness, don't look for it in sex. Don't look for it in love because you're looking for, what you're looking for, you're gonna find something else. And you don't wanna find something that will stick with you for the rest of your life. Get your education and go and do whatever you want because that love you're looking for, it'll find you. All I can do is be a better person. I'm a fatherless daughter, but I made it through. It's very important for a little girl to have a father in her life. And not only a father, a great father. Her father teaches her the ropes of how knucklehead little boys are going to try to get her preciousness. And when that little girl doesn't have that, it's like she doesn't really know her work. to know how a man's supposed to treat you if you don't have that example. His presence, I think, allowed me to have a more positive view on men. Now, the thing is, I'm no psychologist. I did not get a degree in psychology or anything like that. 
I'm speaking from personal experience. This was my life. All of the points that have brought up all the, all of the pain, all of the stories, I have experienced myself. So, just like all the fatherless daughters out there, I am you and you are me. I am a strong black woman who is raising a strong, young, black, intelligent man to be a great father. I am a singer, I'm an actress, I am powerful, I am all these things. I am fabulous, I don't know. <laughs>